Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the electron transport chain. Okay, right, uh, so before we just move on to complex 2, what I just want to discuss is a few drugs which work by blocking the activity of complex 1. Okay, so we'll start with the drug amobarbital. Okay, now all drugs with the ending barbital are barbiturate drugs, okay? Uh, so, basically, this drug, uh, as well as it having a lot of other uh, pharmacological actions, uh, actually does block the activity of complex 1. Now, interestingly, this drug has a very interesting history. Basically, people taking this drug reveal information that they would not usually reveal, basically. So it seems to somehow block uh, the brain's way of blocking uh, certain information from being spilled out, basically. So, basically, we normal people would not tell some people certain things, basically. They would block certain information. Now, the mechanisms that the brain has uh, for doing that seem to be uh, removed by this drug, seem to be affected by this drug. Okay, so it was actually used for many years as a truth serum, and it was used in one notable court case where um, a boy had strangled his girlfriend to death, uh, but the um, court was failing to sort of prove that he had done it, and he was denying it completely. And basically they gave him this drug and he confessed to it instantly, and he gave elaborate explanations as to exactly why he had done it. Uh, it was kind of um, removed for that purpose, because um, basically you can be coerced on this drug into having fake memories. So if someone tells you that this is what happened, basically, you will then accept that as truth. You, you produce false memories, so they can be coerced into having false memories. So it's a quite alarmingly scary drug, the power that it actually has. Okay, now, uh, the reasons that it does that on the level of the brain aren't uh, probably related to its blocking of complex one, but uh, its actions on other um, pharmacological targets, such as the AMPA receptors. Sorry, not the AMPA receptors, the GABA-A receptors. Okay, so, uh, let's look at another drug. Um, rotenone, which is an insecticide, also blocks uh, complex 1. So it's the sort of archetypal example of a drug which blocks complex 1. Okay, now a final example basically is an antibiotic drug by the name of pyrocidin A. Okay, so amobarbital, rotenone, and pyrocidin A are all uh, drugs which will bind to and affect the activity of complex uh, 1. Okay, right. So, after a bit of interesting pharmacology, we'll now move back on to uh, the discussion of the electron transport chain. So, we'll move on to complex 2 now. So, uh, basically, complex 2 also is in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So, let me show it here. So here it is. It's got a less interesting shape than complex 1. It's pretty much just a huge blob, okay? So this is complex 2, and complex 2 also has another name, and it's actually extremely important in the Krebs cycle, and we've already seen it. It's the only enzyme in the Krebs cycle that is bound to the inner membrane of the mitochondria, or well, more than bound, it's actually implanted into the membrane. Um, okay, so it's other name is succinate uh, dehydrogenase, and it's the reaction which, within the Krebs cycle, catalyzes the conversion of succinic acid into fumaric acid, or fumarate. So, succinate dehydrogenase. Right, so let's have a little revision of the reaction which it catalyzes, and then we'll discuss what it's going to do. But it does a very similar thing to complex 1. It gives... Uh, hydrogen atoms uh, to ubiquinone molecules that are within uh, the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, so uh, let's have a succinic acid molecule here. So remember, succinic acid, or succinate, is a four-carbon uh, molecule where you have carboxylic acid groups 
at either end. So here are two carboxylic acid groups. And then off the carbons in between, you then have hydrogen atoms. OK, so this is succinate here. Now, basically, uh, succinate dehydrogenase catalyzes the conversion of succinate into fumarate. OK, or fumaric acid. So I always draw the protonated form, but of course the protonated form is in equilibrium uh, with the deprotonated form. OK, so here then we have protons coming off here, and then we have the carboxylic acid group over here, like so. Right, so basically what have we done here? Well, we've chopped off hydrogen atoms. We've chopped off this hydrogen atom and this hydrogen atom here. OK, now each of these bonds uh, has two electrons within it, of course, one from each of the two members of the bond. OK, uh, imagine giving one electron back to the carbon and one back to the hydrogen in both cases. That will mean that both of these carbons have three electrons. They can then form another covalent bond between the two of them, OK, which will turn this into a double bond. OK, and then what have you got? You've got two hydrogen atoms. And these hydrogen atoms will then be used by the succinate uh, dehydrogenase enzyme. OK, so what's going to happen? Uh, well, actually, the hydrogen atoms are firstly going to be transferred onto another acceptor. They're going to be transferred firstly onto a molecule of FAD. So firstly, what's going to happen? is succinate dehydrogenase complex 2 will put the hydrogens onto a molecule of FAD, converting it into FADH2, so reduced FAD. Now, FAD is short for flavin adenine dinucleotide. So F is flavin, A is adenine, and then D is dinucleotide. OK, so. Basically, flavin adenine dinucleotide accepts both hydrogen atoms. It's a, a neutral molecule. It accepts both hydrogen atoms in to produce a molecule of reduced flavin adenine dinucleotide. OK, now, flavin adenine dinucleotide doesn't get to stay reduced very long. It's just a temporary holder of these two protons. It holds them until complex 2 has time to give them to a molecule of ubiquinone. Okay, so what will happen is it will go back to this and in the process you will take a ubiquinone molecule into a ubiquinol molecule, QH2 here. Okay, so that's what complex 2 does. It also gives uh, protons to ubiquinone. Okay, and I've just realized that I have completely neglected something that's really important about complex one that I should have discussed with you. Okay, so bring back the paper for complex one. Complex one, when it does this, when it passes uh, the electrons to uh, the ubiquinone molecules, it also pumps four protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane into uh, the uh, intermembrane space, basically. Okay, so this is how we're starting to build up this proton gradient. When complex one catalyzes the uh, taking of these hydrogen atoms from the reduced NAD molecules uh, onto uh, the ubiquinone molecules, it also takes four protons that are in the matrix and pumps them across the membrane into uh, the intermembrane space, OK? Now, complex 2 doesn't do that, OK? So that's the difference between complex 1 and complex 2. Complex 1, car um, complex 1 contributes to the building up of this proton gradient across the inner membrane, whereas complex 2 does not. OK, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.